up the Kalex. It's a super simple build. Start with something like this because this will help you better understand IKEA instructions. Because seriously, once you start to understand how IKEA instructions work, it makes all the other builds super simple. All right, let's get started. So one of the first things that I like to do is I like to make sure that I've got the right materials. I've got my screws, I've got my dowels. Next, what I need to do is I need to check to see, okay, what pieces do I have? And kind of familiarize myself with the uh, instructions. Looking pretty easy to me so far. Okay, so step one, I'm looking for this piece and this piece. Notice how there's the, uh, the two holes in the middle on both parts, and then there's the single hole, and then I'm looking for the other one that where the two holes are on the sides in the corners. Two holes, two holes in the corner. What I also like to do is I like to have the instructions set out, and then I make sure that the pieces are set out exactly how the instructions show. So notice for step one, I've got the instructions just like that, and I've got my pieces set out just like that. It's perfect. This makes it to where I'm less likely to mess things up. Now they've also given me an Allen wrench and this plastic thing. The plastic thing will give you a little bit more torque so it's easier to, to actually use the little Allen wrench. So step two, I've got to find this little piece I've got to put the little dowels into it with my little hammer and then I'll just push it into the where the double holes are. So one thing that you want to make sure that you're clear on is if you do use a hammer, be careful because IKEA furniture, while very useful, it can't really withstand a metal hammer banging into it. It'll just start to shatter and fall apart. All right, step three. So for step three, what I see is another long board, but it's thinner than the other ones. It's got two holes at the top of the face and two holes at the bottom of the face. And it's got two holes at the, uh, on the sides at the top and the bottom. Now, sometimes what you need to do is you need to uh, move the furniture just slightly so that way you can use gravity to help you. Now notice, for this step, I've gotta take these two dowels and I've gotta put them at the top and bottom hole to tie it all together. And again, I'm gonna use gravity to help me by going like this. Oh, gotta get that hammer. All right. Let's move on to step five. Got another one of these little pieces. Just gonna go right there, super simple. It looks the same as in the picture. The picture's like this. My piece is the same way now. Got my next piece. Now I know that this step looks kind of funky. You've already got this already completely done. It says that I need to have four dowels over here and two more dowels over here. Word to the wise. Notice how on this one right here, right there, it says you gotta put it at the top and the bottom. Don't just think that it's just two dowels anywhere. There's four holes there, so you gotta put one dowel at the very top and at the very bottom where there's two more holes right here where the screws are gonna go into later. Now notice, step seven and step eight need to be looked at. The, there's no holes on the face of the piece. Step eight, there are holes on the face of the piece. You gotta use the right one at the right time. This piece has holes on the face, so that's step eight. This piece does not have any holes, so this is step seven. Furthermore, notice how, again, there's a little picture right here. On step seven, I need to make sure that the two holes that are on the face in the corner are on the bottom of my project. There's the two holes on the bottom, so this needs to be the bottom Step eight. This piece is actually really forgiving. Notice how there's four holes, one in each corner, and there's really nothing going on over here that's different on both sides. There's, there's a hole in each corner, and then there's two holes in the middle on uh, the top and the bottom and the center. I mean, we're basically done now. All I have to do is put in the final screws, and I'm good to go. So if I look, based off my instructions, two screws need to go over there, two screws need to go right there, two screws need to go over here. Easy.
And then what I can do is I can wrap this up. One more needs to get taken care of right over here. Ah, oh, there we go, now it grabbed. Ikea furniture is very well designed to where things will work for you. You just might need to uh, line them up a little better. There's pieces of furniture out there where no matter what you do, you're gonna have to drill new holes or holes aren't put in the right spots. But Ikea doesn't have that problem, which is really nice. If something's not fitting, it's usually not an Ikea issue because they've had so many people do this, they would have known that there was a problem by now. The only extra tool that I needed was a hammer. But just like that, my friends, I got it. We're good. So step nine is really simple. All they're really saying is, hey, take these little foamy things, put them on the bottom so that way you don't scratch up your floor. And if you need to, there's also a step 10. You can put these little brackets on so that way you can attach your cabinet to the walls for earthquake issues, things like that. With that said, happy building, enjoy, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, bye.